you know, I'm going to have to jump on with Kane next week and do an episode on our show about this one. But was anyone, like, you never seem to think that you're in a bubble until it's like six months after the bubble. Because <laughs> if you don't look back and say we had six trillion plus dollars sloshing around in the system that, you know, if you just think about this. What would the economy be like right now if we didn't put the $6 trillion in? And once you think about that, that's reality. As that money gets spent, system digests it, things will start to go down. And we had a real estate bubble. We had a stock bubble. We had a crypto bubble. Do you ever look at the total amount? Of, look at the market capitalization of cryptos and ask yourself, where did the money come from? Yeah, do that. And now that we are not pumping the money into the system, you know, there was, you know, a good 12 plus months where people didn't have to pay rent or mortgages or school loans. That reality is kicking in. So instead of that money going into the economy, that's going to go pay their bills. Stimulus is drying up. Are we surprised that we're watching some of these asset classes start to go backwards now? We're watching many companies report earnings that are down compared to last year like well it's hard to compare it to last year because there was so much money pumped in the system it was peak everything there's many companies that will probably never see the numbers that they seen last year peloton for example you're stuck at home you can't go to the gym and there's a bunch of money in the system that was probably the best year peloton was ever going to see unless we get stuck in the house again for another variant and trillions more are pumped in the system did we think that things were going to stay up forever? Have we ever seen anything where it just goes up in a straight line forever? And I think that's where we're at. Even the techs, it's, you know, at some point innovation slows. The, the big money makers are all out there. It's like the heyday of the pharmaceutical world where they solved allergies and they solved cholesterol and there's always some new drugs coming out, but, you know, where's that new next big drug that's going to just, you know, bring in $100 billion? We got social media. We got, you know, Salesforce. We got, you know, AI stuff coming on board. And we're, you know, there's there's a tech bubble at the end of the day. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, it's 2001. It's 2001. You know, it, that's a different kind of bubble. But that doesn't mean that we're not in a, a different kind of, you know, new bubble now. And I'm just like, you're looking at regulation issues that are probably going to come down on social media. You see Instagram and Twitter trying to make some changes. On a long enough timeline, I think Section 230 gets reworked. That's going to affect, you know, social media. It's going to affect, you know, I'm guessing it could affect any, anything from Reddit to Yelp reviews to Glassdoor. If you're posting things on the internet... <laughs> Right now, you have to think about if they change some of this stuff, how does it how does it affect me? How could this come back on me? And I don't think a lot of people think about that. It's not just the tech companies that need to worry about things. It's what have you posted on the internet that if we didn't have 230 that you would have gotten sued for? And uh, yeah, there's times are times are changing, whether you like it or not, and. A lot of political issues coming up. The next two elections are going to be crazy. I'm assuming things are going to change in the tech world. And there's a lot more pushback on these like tech oligarchs. They're controlling too much. They have too much power. And it's going to get to the point where the society is going to get fed up with it. And when society is fed up with something, politicians see votes. And they'll go do things to get the votes. So... I'm not surprised. I don't know. You know, the stock market doesn't crash down to like you know nine thousand. You know, <laughs> maybe it does. Who knows? But to think that we're just going to keep going up and up and up and up forever, like there's always a pullback. It's just as a today, is it tomorrow, is it five years from now? We'll see. But there wasn't a lot of reason for a lot of these tech stocks to boom. It's Twitter fall has fallen back. I've not looked at Snapchat in a while, but I'll take a guess that they've fallen back. It's Amazon makes sense because we got all that stimulus money and all that unemployment money and all that money pumped in the system, and then we ran to Amazon. We ran to Target. We ran to Walmart. We spent, 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 and spent. And I can see why, from a retail perspective, they went up. But 
some of these other companies, it's like, why are they going up so much? People spend money on advertising, but now they're pulling back on that. So I'm, not, I'm looking at this and I like, is anybody surprised? I mean, obviously they are. You know, I do think some people just believe things are going to go up forever. I seen it in 2001. I seen it in 2007 and 8 until it busts. And then it's like you just, it, it's there's a lag. You, you think you're in this bubble and this is the new normal. And then it pops. And then you look back and it's like, oh my God, we kind of had some signs, didn't we? Yeah, we had the signs. You just didn't want to believe it because the getting was so good, you wanted to keep getting it. So, but that's the thing. You keep getting it until you don't. So, we'll see what happens. I just saw inflation came out at six point something percent, which still seems like a pretty low number for what we're seeing out there on food and stuff. But, obviously, that's only based on the numbers they track. They don't track everything on inflation because some things do go up and down such as gas prices. Um, but I, like, I don't know where we go from big tech from here. What do we need from the big tech world right now? We need a solution for like COVID. We need an in-home testing option where I can like blow into my iPhone and uh, find out if I got COVID or not. A uh, big tech, if you're listening, why don't you go solve that problem? We don't need another social media platform that makes the world dumber and uh, makes teenagers hate themselves. How about you take your gigantic brain trust and go solve the COVID problem? Um, it seems like the coolest stuff we got out of the tech world when it came to COVID is Google put up a dashboard. You can find out how many cases are in your state. You know, something that a freshman in college could probably do in Microsoft Excel. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens anyways. If you have some thoughts on where we're going big tech-wise or things in general, drop a comment below. But until then, I'm going to catch you on the next one.